the longevity and kind of like the amount of love that this musical gets. Like when you were creating something that you said was so personal, did you expect the world to fall, also fall in love with your work? Uh, no, I mean like you you fantasize about it, yeah. but you don't expect it. Like well, I expected to entertain my friends, you know, like and, and expected my friends to get what I was doing musically or lyrically or what we were doing in an overall story, but I didn't really know that it was going to land with as many people as it did and with as like diverse a group of people yeah. as it did. It was like 5% of a lot of different crowds as opposed to all of one crowd. And so, you know, I started to get a clue that it would last for a long time, but I don't think we quite knew how, how much it would just hang in there. That's awesome. I think thinking that you're going to have a mega hit is the, the worst way. It's probably the fastest way to yeah, have maybe, a flop. To, yeah, it's maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Was, you know, we were John and I were writing. We were each other's audience, and our friends were our audience. And, and but that make that makes it from the heart, and then people respond to that. I have a question. This might come up later because I wasn't sure if for this particular festival we were just talking about the musical or the movie per se. And the movie, I can't help but think, especially for me, like definitely augmented its presence and certainly it's it's like reach to people that didn't necessarily see it in downtown New York or were like aware of it. When you guys, when they, somebody came around saying we want to make a movie, were you guys like, oh man, this is really going to catch on? Or given the sentiment you just said, were you like, I don't know, man, this is kind of just for our friends and our New York crowd. I don't know if this is going to... You know, had my band not broken up, they would have been the band in it. And we were aiming for a very kind of indie sort of aesthetic and not something that would necessarily cross over. So again, you hope it becomes a hit, but we barely were a hit. Like we were able to sell the movie because we created the illusion that we were a hit, but we hardly ever had a week where we made money. Right. Mm -hmm. And we just, we stayed in and pretended to be a hit. And yet here we are. Well, yeah, here we are. and yet here we are. You talk about the reach of the film. For like musical theater of millennials and Gen Z, like that is the primary source that they have for Hedwig. And then afterwards, all of the um, revivals. Yeah. So that's really cool to see generationally. You have to be like, wow, okay, how old are you again? And you know, about yeah. I think that like Hedwig was something, it was hitting on something that wasn't even like much of a topic just yet. And then as it becomes more in the mainstream, we're talking about gender identity and stuff like that. This is way, you know, 20 years before we got there. It just makes it instantly recognizable, instantly classic. Totally. And it never ever goes, it's, it never goes out of style. The, the music never sounds dated to me. 